Hello, welcome to the module Macroeconomics. In this short presentation I will introduce you to the National Equilibrium in the Circular Flow Model. My name is Andreas Nabor from the Isle of Man International Business School. The slides are based on section 8.4 of your textbook by John Sloman, Essentials of Economics, 5th edition. Last class we started to learn about the Circular Flow Model as it is shown here again. We have learned that in equilibrium injections equal withdrawals so that J minus W will be zero. And the sum of domestic investment minus net savings, domestic government expenditure minus net taxes, and exports minus imports will be zero too. In this situation we have the equilibrium level of national income. We have also learned that what goes into the households as income will go out from the households as either consumptions or withdrawals, that is savings, taxes or imports. This can also be shown with this formula. Only in equilibrium, when injections equal withdrawals, income is also equal to aggregate demand. This aggregate demand is represented by the four arrows going into the firms. Aggregate demand consists of domestic household consumption, investment, government expenditure and net exports. These relationships and equilibria can also be shown in a diagram, where national income is plotted on the horizontal axis and the various components of the circular flow, like domestic household consumption, withdrawals and injections, are plotted on the vertical axis. Remember that injections are independent from the level of national income. Review last class's slides for the reasons. Because injections are independent from the level of national income, the injections line is drawn horizontally. Injections stay at their given level, whatever the level of national income is. On the contrary, withdrawals will increase with increasing income. The more you earn, the more you will save, pay taxes and import. That is why the withdrawals line is upward sloping. And equilibrium is where withdrawals equal injections. But what happens if we are not in equilibrium? Let's say we are below equilibrium. At points A and B at income level Y1, injections are greater than withdrawals. National income is lower than in equilibrium. However, the excess injections come to the households as additional income. Households spend this money for domestic consumption and also withdraw parts of their income. This continues until withdrawals equal injections again and the equilibrium is reached. The same process can be shown with the expenditure approach in the same diagram. We start with income being equal to domestic consumption plus withdrawals. This is shown with this 45 degree curve. The 45 degree curve has always an equal distance to the horizontal and vertical axis. Hence, this is a line of equilibrium. If we are on this line, we are in equilibrium. The equilibrium shown in the equation holds. And here we add the expenditure line. You see from the formula that this line represents aggregate demand. It combines injections and domestic consumption. Because the injections line is given already, the blue expenditure line only adds domestic consumption to it. At point Z, expenditure equals income. This is the equilibrium level of national income. It relates to point X, where injections equal withdrawals.
But again, what happens if we are not in equilibrium? Let us assume again that we are at income level 1 and at point E and F. Aggregate demand here is greater than income and withdrawals. This increases national income, thereby increasing withdrawals until we reach the equilibrium again. At point Z, expenditure equals income. This is the equilibrium level of national income. It relates to point X, where injections equal withdrawals. In summary, the equilibrium national income is where injections equal withdrawals and income equals expenditure. The relationship between national income and the various components of the circular flow of income can be plotted on a diagram like this on the right hand side. The equilibrium national income can be shown either where the W and J lines cross or where the expenditure line crosses the 45 degree curve.